for today, we'll talk about the Matatag Curriculum and what is new under this Matatag Curriculum, which was recently launched by our Vice President and Secretary, uh, Vice President Sara Duterte. So, in this new curriculum, there was a presentation of the features of this Matatag Curriculum. So, first is that there will be a major focus on foundational skills, and that means that we will be looking at skills that is a prerequisite to more complex ones. There will be a decongestion of the curriculum. So we would expect that there would be a decongestion, meaning there will be a removal of some of the competencies that are not essential. There will also be a balanced cognitive demands. Now, what does this mean? It means that in the aspect of learners learning something, our learners will be able to concentrate in a particular task better. The removal of cognitive tasks because cognitive load actually is something that will make our learners get overwhelmed. So this is related to decongestion. Basically, when you decongest a curriculum, you will notice that there will be a lessening of the cogn- cognitive demands. This is a good thing no? because when you lessen the cognitive demand or the cognitive load, the learners will be able to concentrate on things that really matter. And this ability to focus on a particular foundational skill, which I think is discussed you know, under focus on foundational skills, the learner will be able to master it better. As we all know, you know just like in, in any any systems that are existing there are key indicators that are there basically if you focus on these key indicators it will have a domino effect on other aspects of the curriculum so hopefully this will be a very lean curriculum focusing on things that really matter other than trying to achieve everything but not capable of achieving it all for instance being a jack of all trades rather than specializing on a particular field we also have a clear articulation of the 21st century skills. So what does this mean? The 21st century skills, as we all know, are very important uh, skills that our learners should learn, considering that there will be an industrial revolution coming in. Education, the educational system should adjust. In the past years, we have noticed that our learners are really struggling to develop these skills. Even the results in the PISA tells us that our learners lack the, the belief that they can grow they had a fixed mindset. No? So that was the findings of the PISA. The PISA results tells us that the, the idea that we can grow as a person in terms of intelligence, in terms of uh, capacity to learn, is absent. No? So we have to develop this among our learners so that they, they'll be able you know, to, to realize that their ability to learn could grow and their intelligence could grow. So here in the in developing the 21st century skill, if this is clearly articulated, you know, considering that there will be focus on foundational skills, decongestion, and then lessening the cognitive load, then they'll be able to develop all these 21st century skills, hopefully. And here, we also see reduced learning areas. Now, this has been a recurring theme among all nations which excel in education. Even other countries, for instance, Japan, in their uh, educational systems, uh, there are a few learning areas. Learners during that time focus on life skills, foundational skills. There are no specific subjects being included, but it's focusing on life skills, helping them live life independently so here hopefully you now with with a reduction of learning areas we are now following the trend of a lot of nations who are currently currently having you no know, good educational system who excel the international arena okay and then we uh, we see also here an intensification of values education and strengthened peace education this has been a major issue considering that there has been observations that our learners are starting to forget the good manners and right conduct. So this is a good thing that all the values education is being revived and strengthened peace education. So what does it mean? Peace education is actually related to security, you know, in national security. And this could be done if only our learners will be able to develop that sense of love for this country deeper. It's no wonder that another subject in the name of Makabayan was created in order to really strengthen peace education. Because yeah, if you look at our mission vision, our vision really is to create learners who passionately love this country. But the reality is seldom do we see these learners learning how to love this country. It's a good thing that there's a subject intended just only to develop peace education. And uh, lastly, you know, on a par with international standards. We want to have an educational system that can compete with the international standards. So hopefully, you know, we will be participating in more international assessments so that we can also check 
the level of our delivery of educational services. And this will be a good uh, benchmark for all of us to see if whatever we are doing is really working. Let's continue no, to the next part. Now, how, how is it reduced? If you look at the current curriculum, there were seven subjects. So we have mother tongue, we have Filipino English, mathematics, and then we have Araling Panlipunan, MAPE, and educational, uh, education, Education sa Pagpapakatao. Pero right now, they are reducing it to five. But uh, let's also observe because uh, these five subjects basically are very much related to each other. For instance, you look at language and uh, reading and literacy. Before, this could be under just one, no English or Filipino. But here, we see that the language itself is reiterated through reading and literacy because you can never, as we all know, literacy is all about interpretation of symbols. It could be words, right? And uh, the ability to read. But the, the tool that you use in order to do this is language. You communicate. So basically, here, uh, language and reading literacy are reiterations of, very, of, of a very important skill that we need our learners to learn. And that is the ability to communicate at the same time, the ability to read symbols, words, the ability to communicate, no? that's language. So even if it, there are five subjects, language and reading and literacy could be, could be a reiteration of a very important foundational skill. And uh, th- that is really something that uh, I admire no, on this new Matatag curriculum. Then we have mathematics no, to deal with numeracy. So another foundational skill that our learners should learn, which is mathematics. And of course, they added a very important subject here, which is in the name of Makabansa. Here, we see that Makabansa is only focusing on the vision of the Department of Education, which is to develop learners who passionately love this country. That is really the first statement there. We dream of Filipinos who passionately love this country. And it's just just wondering why in the previous curriculum that it's so hard to see this has been the first statement this is the first part of our mission vision but there's no subject that really enables us to make this a reality now no we already have a subject that will help us realize this vision for our learners to make them passionately love this country and that is the makabansa see we see in the first part these are dealing with literacy no language reading and literacy the next part is numeracy, which is mathematics, and then their their passion and love for this country, which is for me the third one, no? makabansa. And very important are the values of our learners. So GMRC, good manners and right conduct, is brought back. I remember in the previous curriculum, educa- education sa pagpapakatao is only you know, in high school. That is, there are only two. It's in just one week. There are two hours only given for this subject. So imagine if the teacher will miss the class. It's as if there's no education sa pagpapakatao. But I hopefully this GMRC will be given more importance. It should be given or discussed every day. There should be contact time every day in order for us to really develop the values. So basically, if we analyze the Matatag curriculum, there are only three subjects there. We have dealing with literacy and numeracy of our learners. We have something that will deal with their love for this country. And number three is their value system. If these foundational skills will be developed no, in the first part, hopefully, no, uh, this will really develop our learners and make the features of the Matatag curriculum be realized. As mentioned here, no, we want it to be, there should be a balanced cognitive demand. It's a decongestion and there is a focus on foundational skills and these are really foundational skills. I'm just hoping, no, just my own opinion, if they can integrate also metacognition no, in, in foundational skills because learning how to learn is also a very important skill no, that a child should learn. Okay, But um, maybe perhaps they can just integrate that in GMRC. They can include also the, the skills as to how to learn something better and faster that could be a, good, a very good foundation, a skill for every learner because we seldom talk about this. No? Metacognition is a skill that every learner should learn. It's a foundational skill. Trying to reflect on the best way that you learn. How can you fight procrastination, for instance? How do you, how do you schedule your time? No, these are life skills. But uh, again, this could be integrated in GMRC. No, it could be like GMRC and life skills, something like that. That will help our learners be more adept and more flexible in, in learning something. Because we also target you know, our learners to become lifelong learners. That's the essence of the 21st century skills. So if we don't uh, teach them how to learn, uh, that is something that will also affect them later on. Although they can, uh, they can learn that on their own, but 
if there's a subject specialized on that, of course, no, that will greatly help them survive you know, the next coming years as a, as a learner. So we'll proceed now to the focus on foundational skills. As we can see here, uh, Makabansa serves as the foundation in molding aktibong mag-aaral. So here, you know, I think there's health, healthy, resilient, and patriotic. So they want sa, a learner who is healthy, resilient, and patriotic. And uh, I'm hoping you know, that the foundational skills of life skills that I mentioned, maybe perhaps it could be part of Makabansa. Because it says here resilient. If you want to be resilient, you have to learn all these life skills. Okay, and here has awareness and pride of his or her identity as well as his or her country's history, arts, and culture. And we see here has knowledge and skills in fulfilling his or her duties as a responsible citizen, having the ability to contribute to the progress of his or her community and country as a whole. So basically, this Makabansa subject is an overall um, an overall approach to life and um, it the goal there is to create a learner who is healthy resilient and patriotic okay i think it could be integrated here no the metacognition thing could be integrated here okay and this is a completely new subject and i'm very excited to see how this subject will be operationalized inside the classroom through the curriculum guide. So just like to inform all the teachers, no, we have to really, if we are to implement a curriculum, our main go-to material is always the curriculum guide. And then for you to check the curriculum guide, I have uh, I have here the curriculum guide. Uh, this is not final yet because they will be subjecting the curriculum to a, a pilot test. No? That's the good thing about this new curriculum. It's not something that is haphazardly done. They will be pilot testing it. So uh, for you to see, uh, the competencies involved you can uh, you can check on the video description i'll be sharing it to you so that you'll be able to download no, and and see how the curriculum guide uh, what are the contents of this curriculum guide but again if, if we were to choose if there are materials being used or modules given to us your main reference is always the curriculum guide no that, that was the problem during the mother tongue implementation no one look at the curriculum guide instead the people or the teachers and the administrators made use of the contextualized materials. No? And that's where the problem came in. Okay, So we need to look at the curriculum guide because the curriculum guide is the major source of information as to how we should create and implement uh, the curriculum no? and make it a reality inside the classroom. So here in the learning area, there the current curriculum has 257 competencies. Then the mata Matatag curriculum will only have 46 you imagine that that's a reduction of almost more than 100 percent in mother tongue uh there will be no competencies no, on that uh instead there will be an english from 3120 it will be down to 670 for a filipino uh this is uh from 2378 down to 614 and for makabansa there are 40 for language there is 80 for reading and literacy, there is 77. No, so we see a major reduction of all the competencies. From 11,738, we'll only have 3,664 competencies. Uh, that's a major reduction of the necessary competencies. Remember, all these subjects are already uh, for uh, when you say science, that's, that already refers to all um, the necessary competencies from grade 7 to uh, all the rest so as we can see here clear integration of the 21st century skills uh, here we see information media and technology skills so it is divided to four parts visual literacy information media literacy technology literacy and digital literacy and then in terms of learning and innovation skills we have creativity openness critical thinking problem solving reflective thinking and for communication skills, we have we are trying to target teamwork, collaboration, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, interactive communication, nonverbal communication, communicating in diverse environment. And of course, there are life and career skills that are to be integrated, like informed decision making, adaptive leadership, intercultural understanding, self-discipline, future orientation thinking, and resilience and diversity management. So I think the metacognition part that I'm referring to could be um, it could be shown here and manifested through the life and career skills. Okay, so th this is uh, the clear, as mentioned, clear integration of the 21st 
sensory skills. But my concern is if we'll just uh, continuously integrate it, no, uh, hopefully there will be a clear-cut reference as to the integration. But if there's a subject specializing on 21st century skills, that could be no something uh, for me something better that will uh, help no our learners but uh, hopefully no the, there is a clear cut guidelines as to how we have to uh, integrate so according to the source no uh, this curriculum has complete set of materials already clear set of materials not just a curriculum guide but all the rest of the materials already available so hopefully no this will uh, be something that will provide a clear-cut guidance as to how we're going to de develop and integrate the 21st century skills. And uh, there is also an intensification of values education. So, uh, GMRC is a separate learning area as per RA11476, systematic and explicit integration of depth and core values. And there is an increased time allotment. So, this is what I'm talking about because before... The time allotment is really very uh, scant, no, to say. Then we have specific values for each content across grade levels in a whole school approach. Okay, so that is something that we have to look into, uh, values education, which is greatly uh, needed by our learners. Okay, and then we have here the strengthened peace education. So as we can see, for self-awareness, we see the subjects, no, knowing who our families who we are and our families. Then we have Makabansa, JMRC. Okay, and then uh, we see peace education integrated in all these uh, subjects no, provided from grade 1 to grade 10. And then moving forward, there will be a pilot implementation. So there will be schools selected. Now I hope your school is selected for you to implement this so that you can experience the curriculum firsthand. And uh, the good thing about capacity building, no? is I heard that they will be training first the supervisors before they will train the teachers. Because in the last curriculum, I noticed uh, the first one who were taught were the teachers. And that created a discord in the field because the principals and the supervisors who we are saying, now why are you implementing it that way when um, they, they, were, were, they were just... Uh, during that time, they were still adjusting no? and they don't have any idea as to the new curriculum. So there was a discord that happened. No? There was a disconnect between the supervisors and the, the managers and as to the people in the field. Uh, that was a major struggle. So right now, no, uh, they are already doing it properly. They will start the orientation with the, the, the ones at the leadership role uh, down to the people in the field. So there will also be learning resources provided. Now that's uh, complete learning resources according to the source. And there will be a senior high school curriculum revision soon because this one is for grade uh, kinder to grade 10. And uh, there will be a stakeholder support, hopefully, uh, you know, trying to put together and create learning for our learners is not just the job of the school, but the participation of the stakeholders will really uh, have an impact no that, that is already a proven uh, fact no in research okay so here we see uh, when it will be implemented so right now no uh, we will still use the current curriculum but pilot testing is being done but for school year 2024 and 2025 they will be implementing it in kinder grade 1 grade 4 and grade 7 and in the next school year 2025 2026 grade 2 grade 5 and grade 8 and for school year 2026, there will be an implementation for grade 3, grade 6, and grade 9. And school year 2027 to 2028, grade 10. So I'm also asking myself, no, why are they doing this? Maybe perhaps no, to lessen unintended consequences. This is a strategy to approach uh, change among our uh, people in the field because there will be a major adjustment. And... Also to add, no, there could be a possibility that materials will not be available to all the grade levels. So uh, in order for us to to slowly you know, transition from a new curriculum and to ensure that all materials are already available for all those uh, learners, that's why we see that uh, we have to scaffold through the process of fully implementing the curriculum. So this is a good thing. 
for me, no, not haphazardly implementing a curriculum is good um, because it will help us ensure that it is properly implemented and at the same time, the materials are available. Okay? So, this will uh, culminate on school year 2027 and 2028. And only grade 10 no, will be having uh, the new curriculum during that time. So, another thing is that uh, this will be a new batch. No? If you look at kinder, you are implementing it in school year 2024-2025. Now, just imagine this with me. If you're kinder, during this time, on the next school year, you will be grade grade a grade one. No, so no problem because the grade one here has already uh, experienced what it means to have the matatag curriculum. But in the for the case of grade one, in the next school year, you will still have the matatag curriculum because on the school year twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six, uh, it will be implemented in grade two, grade five, and grade eight. Now, what does this mean? It means that by by 2027, no, perhaps, no, or we will have our first batch uh, of the matatag curriculum, our products of matatag curriculum at the end of 11 years. So those who started kinder on 2024 uh, add 11 years for 2020, uh, uh, for 2024, then we'll be able to have the first set of graduates who experience the full curriculum, right? So that's a good thing because we'll be able to measure only the impact of our work uh, years from now, no, 11 years from now, so that we'll see the effectivity of the curriculum because we cannot really measure it in, in just small uh, portions of learning or by grade level. Okay, The true impact of the, an educational system could be measured years later when we create our final product. And uh, here, no, we see uh, the end goal here. Learners are prepared with strong literacy and numeracy foundation. As we all know, no, the five subjects, it's all about literacy, numeracy, love for country, and values. No, That's all. And love for country or makabansa and values, sometimes they are interrelated. Diba? So it's just um, no, purely foundational, equipped with 21st century skills. They are nationalistic and global and re ready to succeed in life. So there is really a decongestion here, uh, making cognitive load lesser and more uh, more focused on what really matters. Okay, and hopefully, no, um, this is really uh, for me. No, when I look at the curriculum, it is an in enabling curriculum that will help us realize what is really written and what is written in our mission vision. So, the end goal here is para sa isang matatag na Pilipinas, bansang makabata, batang makabansa, the sense of nationalism is high, at the same time, rich in terms of foundational skills. Okay, so, uh, my salute to all those who work hard in order to create this curriculum and to revise the curriculum to a more suitable and more enabling one. So, hopefully, no, in the... Uh, in the implementation, let's give our full support. At the same time, let's also open our minds. So for those who will be having the pilot testing, now it's time for us to really be honest, to be honest as to our feedback. If uh, if there are things to improve as to the curriculum, then that's the a great opportunity, a great time for us to provide feedback so that unintended consequences, just like what happened in previous in the previous curriculum could be avoided. So thank you so much no, for today. That's our, uh, that's our sharing for today. And I hope you learned something. Now, don't forget to follow us or subscribe uh, in, in this channel, Learning with Doc Lebs. In this channel, our goal is to help our teachers teach better uh, so that at the end, they'll be able to help our learners the future of this country. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you in our next video.